This is Hidden Killers Week in Review. A look back at the most prolific stories of the week. Welcome to the podcast. If you'd like to listen to an ad-free version of this episode and all of our episodes, then search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts and press subscribe. That's our premium channel where all of our ad-free and advanced episodes live all in one place. True Crime Today Premium Plus. Search it on Apple Podcasts and press subscribe. Even try it for three days free. The blood washed away, but the guilt never does. Welcome to Hidden Killers with Tony Bruschi, featuring psychotherapist and author Siobhan Scott. Six new accusers uh, in the uh, Diddy case. By the time you hear this, there'll probably be more because there inev inevitably is every time we talk about this. But the six we're talking about right now are the ones that Tony Busby has brought forward. Uh, four of them men, uh, two of them women, all with uh, different accusations uh, ranging from sexual assault in a Macy's department store by Diddy, um, uh, all the way to at his parties and and so forth. There's a lot to unpack in this. Joining me to discuss, Javon Scott, psychotherapist and author. Let's just start with this. People already know about Diddy. They know about the accusations against him. They know about the uh, patterns of behavior and such. Uh, it's not hard today if someone were to say, Diddy did this to me to come up with a story that seems in line with the other many, many, many stories. It's not a secret uh, anymore. So with these six and the other 120 uh, that are pending with Busby, um, how do we know what's real? How do we know what's, what's going to be a legitimate claim or not? It's just getting nightmarish, isn't it? Yes. It's, it's how do you even sort that out? That's the question of the year here with this story. Mm -hmm. It's it's becoming increasingly murky and all kinds of people are making these bizarre, horrible, often, you know, just shocking allegations. But I don't know how we can sort all that out. Um, who's got some kind of supporting evidence, mm -hmm. something, you know, just to indicate that they really were at that Place at the time that they're claiming. Um, did anybody else notice anything? Have they told other people over the years? I mean, it's it's a, a tough one. Especially when it goes back to like the 90s. I mean, yeah. we're, we're talking, I mean, there's not digital footprints. There's, you know, that doesn't yeah. exist. There wasn't such a thing, really. Maybe your beeper, but even then. Um, but but there, there's there's just a lot of uh, a lot of questions that are, are gonna be mm -hmm. raised here as to, you know, how do you corroborate something like this? And it's not to say that you don't want to believe a victim by any means. Right. It's just you can't necessarily charge somebody with a crime that there's literally no evidence to convict them on other than a person saying it, which is why, unfortunately, you know, many cases with true abuse that goes on never go anywhere because there isn't. That yeah, evidence. exactly. We what, see that all the time. What do we have different in this case where maybe maybe there's going to be a chance to, to corroborate this that maybe we wouldn't see in many other? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure of all the details that they're um, alleging at this point and what they may have. And of course, I think in many cases, people are just hoping that they get some sort of a payout from mm -hmm. it. You know, if, if they realize that, yeah, there's no way we can come up with something that's going to corroborate it in a, a court, you know, that maybe they get some benefit in some other way. That's the interesting thing with uh, with this is, is you know, what are you going to get? Uh, at this, yeah. He has a lot of money. We, we do know that into the billions of dollars. He's going to have a lot of court costs that are going to yeah. probably go pretty high. Um, and then there's a lot of people that are going to need to be paid out in some sort of uh, a settlement of some sort at the end of the day. But this is a lot of people, 120 some uh, here, but it's going to be more. We're probably going to get into the thousands probably. of accusers yeah. uh, by the time all this is is said and done. Uh, throwing someone's hat into the ring on this, um, you know, it also risks exposure of who they are. They're Jane Doe's and John Doe's right now. Yeah. I guess the, the question is, um, you know, is it worth it for those individuals? Do they, you know, to, to, I guess it's a personal question. Do you want your name exposed out there? Do you want to have to relive in the scrutiny of it exactly. all? Uh, that's that's yeah. a big question. What, what sort of battles do individuals who have been victims of something like this, what do they go through in their mind when they determine yeah, I do want to stand up. I do want to have my voice heard. I do want to be known as, you know, I was a victim of this person because I don't want other people to be victimized. Let's talk about that a little bit. What goes on in one's mind to make that determination if it's right for them to come forward? 
It's something that I, I think a lot of people choose to never do just because of the shame that's attached to it. But also as they see other victims coming forward, we saw that with the Me Too movement is that was what Me Too was about is this happened to Me Too at some point in my life. And so I think as people get a sense of power and validation when they see other people coming forward and being believed. And so at that point, you know, it's it's a process that they have to go through. What is it going to cost them? But at some point, the the benefit seems to outweigh the cost. Yeah. And that's probably very much, like I said, an individual choice yeah. for every single person as to whether or not they want to relive it, essentially, by, by putting all of that out. Welcome to the podcast. If you'd like to listen to an ad-free version of this episode and all of our episodes, then search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts and press subscribe. That's our premium channel where all of our ad-free and advanced episodes live all in one place. True Crime Today Premium Plus. Search it on Apple Podcasts and press subscribe. Even try it for three days free. You're in the thick of a true crime saga, every detail sinking in, and then, wham, a commercial about something you couldn't care less about. It's like being served a microwaved dinner at a five-star restaurant. But it doesn't have to be this way. Go for True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts. With True Crime Today Premium Plus, you get uninterrupted, ad-free episodes, extended interviews that dig even deeper into the muck, and early access so you can brag to your friends. It's like ordering the secret menu at a crime buffet. So, search for True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts, subscribe, and savor every twisted detail without interruption.